Oh my god. Welcome to the True North Church podcast, where we gather to explore faith, find inspiration, and strengthen our spiritual connection. At True North, we exist to help people navigate through the oceans of life in the direction that lands at the heart of God. Each week, we'll dive into meaningful discussions, share uplifting stories, and delve into the teachings that guide our lives. Whether you're a longtime member or a first time listener, we're grateful to have you join us on this journey. So, let's embark on this episode of Faith, Community, and Discovery together. Talking about is trust. So, the fact that she was talking about how we have to trust Him even when, even when it doesn't, even when it's not fair. Amen. Even when it's not fair, even when you're like, God, can I just have a pass? Can, Lord, can, 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 can you slide me a hall pass this time, Lord? Don't, I, don't wanna, I, don't, I don't feel like trusting you in this season. Amen. Uh, uh, this ain't endorsement. This service is not sponsored by this company or book. But um, this, uh, this book I have right here, I, I, I keep it in my backpack, and I've actually started keeping it in my lunchbox at work. And sometimes, every now and then, I might have time where I finished the route enough to where I could actually breathe but all this book is is really it's it's a bible but it's the four gospels woven together so I don't know if you've ever opened up the book or opened up the bible and saw you know how in Matthew how in Matthew there's certain stories and then in Mark there's different stories but then a lot of them they 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 agree but then also there's some differences you know within the gospels nothing wrong with that it's just different perspectives what I love somebody and I've always said this I've always thought this but I didn't have the patience nor the time to do it but I've always wondered like how come nobody's taken all four gospels and just mashed them together you know and did it in chronological order and somebody did it and they call it God with us and all it literally is and all it is is just Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's all comprised into one. And I love it because you'll open up and you'll read a scripture and then I have beside it where it is, you know, in your other Bible. So you can look and see. So you may see Matthew 1 and then the next verse is Luke 3. So it's pulling all of the story to make one big. I'm like, if you know, because if we watch a movie, we don't like scattered. We like one unified story. So I recommend this. It's called God with us. Um, it's the four gospels woven together in one telling. It's the New Living Translation, so, but it's really good. I recommend it um, if you're a historical person like me, if you just, if you like it in order. Um, but it's called God with us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. His presence is in the room. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Today is going to be more of a, an it's a Jesus, meaning, you know, we will, we're going to be drawing from the tits today. We're going to be pulling a lot out of the word of God. We're going to be pulling out what we're supposed to be, uh, how, how we're supposed to be responding to everything that's going on in the world. I'm not a big news person, you know, but at the same time, what's going on in Israel, it affects us. I don't know if you knew that. <clears throat> Has anybody seen what's going on with Israel, the war in Israel? It's it's heartbreaking, but also it's alarming it's 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 shocking. It's, it's so many other things. It's almost there's no words to compare it. You know, I, like I said, I'm not a big news person, but you know, because it's Israel, it does affect us as believers. Amen. And just to kind of give you some stats, I I hate starting with doom and gloom, but I promise it gets better. Look at Spice say it gets better. But right now, as of yesterday, what was reported, nearly twelve thousand. Is the approximate number of those who are wounded on both sides. So that's just not one side. That's just not uh, Israel. That's not the, the, the other armies. That's both sides. So nearly 12,000 people have been wounded on both sides with those in Gaza, accounting for a majority more than 8,714. More than 3,500. That's the estimated uh, death toll caused by the conflict with Israel according, accounting for 1,300, and Gaza accounted for at least 2,200, according to the news. It's a lot of, there's, and, and, and the way they talk it, it there's, there's no end right now in sight. There is no end right now in sight. 
And the reason that I wanted to give those stats is because ultimately, because it is Israel, this affects us. As the believers, this affects us. Even if, you, even if you've never believed in Jesus, it still affects you. Every war that occurs affects us. You know, if you, if you look at the, the Syrian and Russian war, we noticed shortly after that, um, prices started to inflate. You know, the, the cost of oil went up when we went into the Iraqi war. I mean, they, you, every war in the world, it affects us, but especially with this, as believers, it affects us. You know, and when I look at it, and I'm, like I said, I'm not a big news person, I'm like, God, how, how, how am I supposed to respond? What, 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 how, how should my heart be? How should our heart be? Because, yes, it may not be on our soil, but it still affects us, amen? amen. If you have a Bible this morning, I want to read Mark chapter 17. Mark chapter 17. In verse 1, it says, As Jesus was leaving the temple courts, one of his disciples came to him and said, Teacher, look at these magnificent buildings and what tremendous stones were used to build all these. Jesus turned to them and saying, Take a good look at all these enormous buildings, for I'm telling you, there will not be one stone left up another upon another. It will all be leveled. Later, while Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives overlooking the temple, his disciples, Peter, Jacob, John, and Andrew, came to him privately where he was sitting and said, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what supernatural signs should, be, should we expect to signal your coming and the completion of this age? Jesus answered, At that time, deception will run rampant, so beware that you're not fooled. For many will appear on the scene claiming my authority or saying about themselves, I am God's anointed, and they will lead many astray. You will hear rumors of wars nearby with more rumors of wars to come. Make sure that you are not thrown into a panic or give into your fears, for these things are destined to happen. Prepare for it, but still the end is not yet. And then verse 8, for nations will go to war against each other and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be terrible earthquakes in place after place, seismic events of epic proportion, and there will be famines and riots. This is how the first contractions and birth pains of the new age begin. Let's pray real quick. Lord, thank you so much for today. Lord, thank you for the seeds that you're sowing in us, Lord. Holy Spirit, show us how to respond to the text as we read it. Show us how to take the words that you say, Jesus. Make them come off the page and into our heart and show us how to follow them exactly. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen. So in verse 7, obviously, Jesus says, he tells, uh, he tells the disciples that you are going to hear about rumors of wars and you're going to be experiencing wars. But then he says, make sure that you are not thrown into a panic or given to your fears for these things are destined to happen. Prepare for it, but the end is still not yet. See, when war happens, everybody panics. I mean, it's, it, this isn't a shot or anything. I, it's true. When war happens, everybody panics. But Jesus said that there's going to be wars that go on, and there's going to be rumors of wars. Uh, you know, if you, if you do watch the news, you can turn on the news at any time, day or night. They are faithful to remind you that there's a rumor of an uprising. There's a rumor of a war. There's a rumor of a riot or whatever it is. But when war occurs, people panic. And it's always been true. It's certainly, it was certainly true in Jesus' day. And that's why he said these things. He said that it, it, it will happen in our world throughout our fallen history. But watch this. Unfortunately, war is a very prevalent problem with the human condition. It's a very prevalent problem. It's sad. It's horrific. And we have to know that, that it's, but at the end of the day, it's not, it's not going to determine the end of the world. Because Jesus said that there will be wars and there will be rumors of wars. But still, the end will not come after that. The end is not yet. He said, prepare for it, but still the end is not yet. Right. And see, you know, if you're like me, it's, it's, it's naturally it's hard to understand how God could allow such atrocities like slavery or World War I or II or Desert Storm, Vietnam War, um, so many other wars, uh, the, the Russian and Syria War, the, the Iraqi War, the, the Israel War that's going on right now. It's, it's, it's hard to come to grips with how God could allow these wars to take place. 
But we do know for one, just to give you one example, out of, the, out of World War II, the nation of Israel became a country. So even in the midst of turmoil, even in the midst of panic, even in the midst of warring and murder and all these different things, God is still able to take, turn it around for his good. He's still able to take all the bad and turn it around for his good. And it's hard to see that he's using, that he's able to turn this situation around, but he can. Amen. If he can turn this around, he can turn you around. Amen. Amen. If he can hold the stars in place, then he can hold your heart the same. Amen. Amen. And the, the existence of Israel is crucial to prophecy. I mean, prophecy says that the Antichrist will definitely be identified when he brokers peace between both sides. So definitely keep your eye upon that. Keep your eye out for that. But Daniel chapter 9, you don't turn there, but Daniel chapter 9, 24 and 27 says that the Antichrist will be identified as he tries to broker peace between Israel and their enemies. That's a definite sign. That is a definite sign. But here's where it hurts. From our human nature, we are violent and cruel to each other. Out of the out of the coreness of our truest human nature, you know, we are violent and cruel to each other, selfish. James chapter four, verses one through four. You don't have to turn there, but you can write this down. James chapter four, verses one through four. James informs us that the heart of all wars or that at the core of all wars, it's selfish and greedy desires and agendas that both sides host within themselves. James says that every war can be, can be traced back to greediness and selfishness hosted within the individual on both sides. And if you look at this war that's going on overseas, all it is is somebody wants this piece of land, it's not fair, and the other person is defending this piece of land. And because it's Israel, it goes much deeper than that. It goes, it goes literally into the spiritual realm of the, of the spirit of darkness versus the spirit of light. But at the end of the day, James, James 4, 1 through 4, he says that the heart of all wars are selfish and greedy desires and agendas that both sides host within themselves. James even goes to say in the mirror translation that we allow our heart, watch this, we allow our heart to become so consumed with longing for something until we are ready to kill for it. And even then we're not satisfied. Even then we're not satisfied. Cain and Abel warred. Why? Because one was jealous of the other's offering to God. Instead of saying, hey, how did you do that? Let me do that. Let me do it the way you did it so I could be pleasing to the Lord. Instead, he got jealous. But guess what? Even though our human nature is to be cruel and violent to each other, God's, human, God's nature is to provide an opportunity for our redemption. Let me say it best this way. Even though we mess up, God's nature, our, our, our human nature is to mess up. Our human nature is to be cruel. Our human nature is to be petty. Our human nature is to do all these different things. But God's nature is to provide a chance for us to be redeemed. Amen. Amen. Now, a lot of times when the boys do stuff and I'll be like, all right, we done. You done. You done. You done messed up, A.A. Ron. You know, I'm like, okay, we done. No, let me have one more chance. Daddy, let me have one more chance. Even though I know as soon as I say, all right, here's another chance, they're going to take out running. They're going to break something. Still, they're like, give me one more chance, give me one more chance. And every time I do that, I'm reminded of us and God. Because a lot of times we'll mess up, we'll do the same things over and over, we'll slip up and say the same thing or whatever it is, and we're like, Father, forgive me, Lord, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, da, da, da. And how forgiving is he? Being the God that knows all things, he knows that when you walk out that door, he knows that you're going to run into that one person that triggers you, and you're going to be like, bless God, I'll... they better be glad I'm saved. God knows the different, thing, the different triggers that you're, going to, that you're going to interact with or you're going to, you're going to experience on your day-to-day. -day. But still, him being in his full nature provides an opportunity for, for our redemption. So watch this. So from our human nature, we're violent and cruel to each other, but it's God's nature to provide an opportunity for our redemption. Amen? And he does this despite our sinfulness. Even though our own sinfulness, uh, just as it just as it was, our cruelty that crucified Jesus, it will be it, it will be human cruelty that will prepare the world for Jesus's return. I've always said I've said this since I was a teenager. 
you know, because everybody gets like, oh, you know, I can't believe the world keeps getting darker and darker. You know, you never clean a bathroom that's already clean. If a, if a bathroom's clean, you never go, all right, I'm going to go, I'm going to go clean over the clean stuff. You know, when, when you wash and dry the clothes, well, we'll do the towels. When you wash and dry the towels, you wash them in the wash, throw it in the dryer. And once it's nice and fresh, once the socks are warm, I don't know, just, just a little personal information. I love warm socks out of the dryer. Oh, it makes me feel like everything is right in the world for at least a few seconds before I hear, daddy, daddy, daddy. But I put them nice toaster. Oh, man, I just think about it. Ah, that a nice cup of coffee. And maybe, you know, I don't know, some, some jazz music or something. I'll be, you know, I'll be, I'll be content. Won't I do? Yeah, you ain't got to ask for much. But once you take those clean clothes out of the dryer, you're, you're not going to throw them right back in the washer and clean them again. They've already been cleaned once. They've already been dried once. And, you know, so ultimately, why? You know, I, I've always said this as a kid and as a teenager, but the Lord's not coming back to an to a, to a area that's already clean. You know, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they would get upset and say, why do you hang out with the, why do you hang out with the sinners? And he says, I, I didn't come for those that are well. I come for those that are sick. I didn't come for those that think they have it all together. I come for the broken. I've, I've, I've come to heal the broken hearted. I've come to heal those that, that can't see. I've come to restore those that were lame. I've come to restore all those that couldn't do what they needed done for themselves. And as much as we don't like wars going on, at the end of the day, wars are preparing the way for Jesus to come back. Just because you turn on the news and see that there is a war going on, according to what we just read, Jesus said, yes, wars will happen. Somebody say wars will happen. Rumors of wars will happen. But guess what Jesus said? Still, the end is not near. So what's sad about that is, is there's more to come. There is more to come. But at the same time, Jesus said, prepare for it. And you know what? You know what I love about Jesus? We said it last week, how the Holy Spirit is a surgeon. The Lord is not going to ask you to do something all by yourself. He's not going to ask you to go somewhere and then just leave you. He's not going to ask you to do something. He's not going to ask you to prepare and not give you the tools for you to prepare. Amen. He wouldn't be the, he wouldn't be the, the true and loving God and good teacher that he is. Holy Spirit, show us how to respond to uh, respond to the word as we read these next passages. But in Mark chapter 13, still in the same chapter, as I said earlier, was it 17 or 13? It was 13, okay. Mark 13, verses 9 through 13. Jesus says this, he says, be on your guard. I like this. You know why I like this? In the Lindsay Melton translation, he says, Jesus says, stay ready. Look at your neighbor and say, stay ready. stay ready. I love this. Jesus said, be on your guard for they will repeatedly hand you over to the ruling councils and you will be beaten in public gatherings and you will stand trial before kings and high ranking governmental leaders as an opportunity to testify to them on my behalf. But prior to the end of the age, the hope of the gospel, watch this, the hope of the gospel must be preached to what? all nations so when they put you under arrest and hand you over for trial don't even give one thought about what you will say simply speak what the holy spirit gives you at that very moment and realize that it won't be you speaking but the holy spirit repetitively speaking through you brothers will betray each other until death even as a father his child children will rise up to take a stand against their parents and have them put to death oh lord Verse 13, it's meant to be hated by all because of your allegiance to the cause that bears my name. But determine, watch this, but determine, somebody say determine. Determine to be faithful to the end and you will be what? Saved. I love this. If you don't mind going back up to verse 9, Jesus is prophesying to the disciples. Because that ended up happening to some of the disciples. Literally, verse 9, he said, be on your guard, stay ready, for they will repeatedly hand you over to the ruling councils and you will be beaten in public gatherings. The, uh, literally, he's prophesying to the disciples of their future. He's letting them know because there's some, some of the disciples, they too were going to face some type of persecution. 
And guess what? Us too, we will face some type of persecution all because of our allegiance to Jesus. All because our belief and our faith in the firm persuasion in the God that we cannot see. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God that split the Red Sea. The God that shut the mouths of the lion. The God that went to, to the wooden cross and hung on the cross and took all of our sins upon the cross. Nailed them according to Galatians. Nailed every sin that you would have made past, present, and future. Nailed it to the cross. And then three days later, he got up and left every sin in the grave. And now sits at the right hand of heaven, interceding for us waiting for the right time to come and bring his kingdom upon earth the bible said that jesus said that we will face some type of persecution because we are we've pleaded or we've uh, we've given our life we surrendered our heart to this watch this though somebody leaving you a bad comment on social media that's not persecution that's not the type of persecution Jesus talks about. Somebody, somebody uh, looking at you wrong, that's not the type of persecution Jesus talks about. Somebody saying a rumor about you. Somebody making fun of you. The tire going flat while you're driving. That's not the persecution that Jesus is talking about. The prices of gas going up to $5, that's not the persecution Jesus is talking about. Did you hear what so-and-so said? Man, I'm a... All my coworkers used to said, you know, uh, said that we have a bunch of keyboard warriors, and the fact that people people may talk about you on, online, that's not the type of persecution that Jesus is talking about. See, our idea of persecution, it's fool's gold. You know what fool's gold is? Fool's gold is it's it's the gold that you know you may wear, and then if it gets too hot, you get too hot. All of a sudden, you have this little green line around your neck. We had this. We had this one. I had this one coworker. He always wore a gold chain. And one time, my boss was like, "We're gonna see how real that. We're gonna see how real that is." It's supposed to be. It was one of those days where it was 100 degrees outside, and he's like, "We're gonna see how real that gold chain is. If if it ain't real, you have a big old green line around it." So of course, you know, we were all checking at the end of the day, like, "Hey, how's your net looking?" There were no lines. So, oh, you got the real gold. Like, you must have got a promotion. What you do, you know? But our idea of persecution is fool's gold. The reason I say it's fool's gold, because if you want to see what real persecution looks like, go and research what it's like to serve Jesus and follow Jesus and trust Jesus in China. Go and look and see what it's like to, to put your confidence in Jesus. Go and look and see what it's like on a Sunday morning at a church in China or, or deep in the Middle East or in Korea or anywhere overseas. If you want to know what real persecution looked like, look up Paul. Paul was beheaded. Peter was crucified upside down on a cross. Let that sit. If it wasn't enough to be crucified on a cross, he was hanging upside down. Peter was crucified on a cross, hanging upside down. Luke was hung from an olive tree, and James was stoned to death. Research the persecution of the 12 apostles and then compare their woes to, oh, man, I, I'm, I'm, the car's on E. The devil, the devil been busy. Oh, man, you know, this one person, this, this one parent don't lie to me. The devil's been busy. No, that's just life being life. At the end of the day, the tire's going to need air. As we was leaving the house today, I looked over my truck. Those tires need air. I, there wasn't a thought that come to my mind. Oh, the devil been busy. No, I drive 30 miles one way, so 60 miles a day. So, therefore, after a while, got to put air in the car or air in the tires. Electricity has got to, electricity runs through your house at the end of every month. You got to pay the bill. They cut the lights off. The devil been busy. No, the devil ain't busy. The devil's doing other things. I remember one time I was at this house and uh, it, it was super dark and, I'm, and I was going to read the meters and I had a lot of meters that day. So I, 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 I broke my rule and started in the dark. And I'm trying to read and because it's dark, I'm, I'm extra sensitive. I'm extra sensitive, and I'm just like, okay, what's, what's going to pop off? What's going to happen? And I was reading, I hear stuff, and I look, don't see anything. And uh, I remember I, I you know, moved the leaves around to look at this thing, and I hear this pop, and I jumped up. And you know what it was? Just an acorn fell off the tree, hit the ground. But because I was so hypersensitive, even the littlest thing, I blew up to astronomical proportions. That's why Jesus said that there will be wars and there will be rumors of wars, but don't blow, don't, don't, don't surrender your heart to fear. 
Because he said, prepare for it. Even though he said that all these things are going to happen, we read it earlier, but he said the end is still not near. But according to what, you know, Jesus said, that we, that, that, that the, the fact that we, uh, that we face all these type of persecutions, it's an opportunity for us to testify to our persecutors about the gospel. It's an opportunity to point them to Jesus. Because so you said, and you will stand trial before kings and high ranking government leaders. And as an opportunity, there it is, as an opportunity to testify to them on your behalf. So when you feel like you're being persecuted, don't be like, don't see it as persecution. But Jesus says, see it as an opportunity to tell them about the gospel. See it as an opportunity to point them to Jesus. See, Jesus was all about true north before we ever came up on the scene. Everything you go through is an opportunity, one, for you to pray. We said that two weeks ago on Wednesday night. Everything you go through, it's an opportunity for you to run and pray, but also it's an opportunity for you to point people to Jesus. Amen? So when you're going through it, point people to Jesus. Whatever you're going through, point people to Jesus. I've said it before, but be like the, the, the pointer dog. You got to use everything that you got and still point to Jesus. Still show that he is good. Still show that he deserves all the glory and honor. Amen? Amen. In verse 10, Jesus, he's repeating himself, which means it's something that we should really pay attention to. But in verse 10, if you don't mind, <clears throat> he says, but prior to the end of age, the hope of the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. So before the world ends, because if you turn on the news now, they're saying because all these different things, especially the Christian news, if you, uh, because of the war that's going on overseas, all right, we're, get, we're setting up the ending. The ending is near. When Jesus says in his word, no, it's not near. In fact, he says in verse 10, he says, before the end of the world, the hope of the gospel must first be preached to what? All. All nations. In other words, there is much more to come. Verse 11 and 12, he is talking to the disciples, and then he talks to us next. But in verse 13, here's where I want to get to in verse 13. It's spent to be hated by all because of your allegiance to the course that bears my name. It's spent to be hated. Jesus always said it's spent to be hated all because of your allegiance to him. This doesn't mean we go hater hunting. This doesn't mean you, you know, you walk in a Walmart, you're like, all right, just got out of church. Let's see, let's see who doesn't want the gospel now. You just, you just looking at them. Somebody's, hey, Drew, have you prayed? I don't sense that you prayed. Don't go hate her hunting. Don't walk up in the utility office and they're like, hey, can I help you? You need help. I have the power of God and I'm, you don't want to receive it. There's something wrong with you. We talked about the spirit of the Antichrist Sunday. You have it. Don't go hate or hunting. All right. Jesus said, expect it. Don't. So therefore, therefore, even if we don't go hate or hunting, still don't be surprised when people don't, 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 don't believe the hope that you fully have. Don't, don't, don't go hater hunting, but, you know, obviously don't be caught by surprise when you are seen differently and treated differently because of your faith in Jesus. Jesus challenges them, he challenges the disciples, and he challenges us to what he doubles, he doubles down what we believe. He challenges us to double down what we believe. He challenges us to stand ten toes deep in the faith. He challenges us that, that we are to preach the gospel in all spaces. Doesn't mean that you give them a five-point sermon, but when, you, when you're interacting with friends, just under your breath or just in your heart and your spirit, be like, hey, Lord, create, cre cre Lord, create the way for me to, to just insert you in this conversation. Nonchalantly, not overtly, just, Lord, show, get, just, just create the opportunity. Lord, fill my, you, Lord, you said you told disciples and you had Pastor Lindsay tell us Sunday that well, all, we didn't have to worry about what we was going to have to say. We just had to open our mouth and you would fill it. So, Lord, e even in this dinner, even in this meal, even, even as I'm shopping for groceries, or even as I'm on the phone or texting or responding, Lord, show, just, just, just give, me, give me that space. Give me the words to say, how to say it, when to say it. Jesus. Don't go hate or hunting, but don't be caught surprised when you are seen differently and treated differently because of your faith in Jesus. Don't be caught by surprise. Don't be caught by surprise. And I love this. He says, but determine 
to be faithful to the end and you will be saved. Determine. Somebody say determine. determine. I'll close with that, but I love it because in other words, determine. You know what determine means? Determine means to consciously make, this, make the choice. Constantly make the choice. You willingly make the choice. So when he said determine, he is saying consciously and willingly make the choice to be faithful to the end. Be faithful to the end. When you get to heaven, you, we read the scriptures, but when you get to heaven, Jesus isn't there to say, well done, my good and most liked person in the community. He doesn't say, well done, my good, and oh, you had the most followers on social media. Well done, and oh, you made the best macaroni and cheese. He doesn't say, well done, my good, oh, you made the best meatloaf, because Jesus didn't like meatloaf, all right? But he don't say those things. He ain't complimenting you on your English peas and your black eyed peas and your lima beans. He ain't complimenting you on how, keep, how clean you keep the van and car. He's a complimenting on how well you, on, on, your, on your streak on the Bible app. It's well done, my good and faithful servant. Jesus said, make the choice. Determine in your heart that I'm going to be faithful to the end. Lindsay, what are we supposed to do? We make the choice to keep sharing the gospel with everyone we come in contact with. Make the conscious choice to share the gospel with everyone you come in contact with. Keep loving people with the same love that God loves you with. In other words, keep going. Somebody say, keep going. Keep going. Determine in your heart. No matter what you go through, you got to determine in your heart. You got to stand faith on it in the hip hop culture because I'm a hip hop head. What we say is we say stand 10 toes down in it. I love to say, say it with your chest how good he's been to you. Say it with your chest when somebody's like, man, I, you, you, you're different. And say it with your chest. The reason I'm different is because I've been redeemed by what Jesus has did on the cross. I'm a new creation. Everything that I've done in my past, it's been covered under the blood. The old life that I used to live, it has been buried deep, deeply buried. And what's risen, what you're seeing before you is a new creature empowered by the Spirit of God. A new individual has the supernatural power of heaven. A new individual that walks with a line on his front, a line on his back, a line on his left, and a line on his right. You are looking at a new individual that is not the head or that is the head and it's not the tail. You are looking at a new individual that understands that even when he's in the valley, he is surrounded by lilies. And you are looking at a new individual that can, more, that can dance even in the morning. He can rejoice even in sorrow. He can spin around, turn around, jump, and do whatever he wants to do. Why? Because he has been freed and who the son has freed is freed indeed. That's you. And Jesus says, determine that posture in your heart. Get that posture in your heart and don't let it go. People are going to come and people are going to go. Pastor Kelsey said earlier, people will clap you up and people will shout you down. At the end of the day, make the choice that my heart, my heart, I will determine in my heart to go, to keep going to the very end. No matter what I see on the news, I will still keep sharing the love of God. No matter what my bank account looks like, I will still keep loving people with the same love that God loves me. Lindsay, how do we do this? Don't jump on the fear bandwagon. Don't jump on the fear bandwagon. See, a bandwagon is it's, it's, it's the wagon that everybody jumps on because it's following the trends. It's following the most popular trends. A lot of times people refer to it as sports, you know. If you weren't with Steph Curry when he was in college, you can't be a Warriors fan. No, we'll take you. We'll take you. But the world is, is, has jumped on this fear bandwagon because of inflation, because of politics. Lordy day, I don't even want to get into politics, but because of politics, everybody is fearful. Because of the wars that are going on, everybody is fearful. Jesus says, this should be no shock to us. So therefore, don't jump on the fear bandwagon. Don't jump on the, the, on the world is ending and now Jesus is coming back on the white horse to do the final battle with Satan bandwagon. Don't jump on that. Don't, uh, don't, don't, jump, on, don't jump on all these different trains that are the opposite of the gospel. Because Jesus said the end would not come until all the gospel had been preached. So that's, you know what that means? That means we got work to do. That means that, you know what, you got to put your apron on if you haven't put it on. And if it's already on, then get used to it getting dirty. 
Get used to your hands getting dirty. Cohen, bless his heart whenever he finishes a meal. Daddy, wash hands. Daddy, wash hands. Because he knows whatever he wants to go do now, he's got to have, he needs to have clean hands. You know, one of the things I do on Sunday mornings, we get the boys ready, fully dressed, and then I make them either put their rain jackets or they put some of my old shirts on and then they go eat at the table. Why? Because they about to, if, because one, they had their daddy's DNA. And when food comes on the table, it's work. It's work. We, we about to work. Uh, we're working on we're working on them trying to get them to eat a little bit better and and, and not as just devouring everything. But at the end of the day, when it's good, you can't help it. And when they, when they have my old shirts or when they have the jackets, a lot of times there's pancake syrups or crumbs or whatever it is all on there. Why? Because they're working. They're entrenched in it. If we're entrenched in the gospel, if we are entrenched in the presence of God, if we are entrenched in believing that he is fully good, if we are entrenched in trusting him, then guess what? We should show it. There should be evidence on us. There should be evidence in our speech. There should be evidence in our thoughts. There should be, watch this, there should be evidence in the shows that we watch or don't watch. There should be evidence in the music that we listen to or don't listen to. There should be evidence in the thing, in the places we go, in the places we're like, ah, oh, no. If we're entrenched in trusting Jesus, then there should be evidence of it. Amen. There should be evidence of this. So today we are going to continue to do the last thing that Jesus directed us to do. Well, Lindsay, what's that? It's serving our neighbors out of the same love the father has for us. It's sharing the good news, a.k.a. the gospel, with whoever we come in contact with. Listen, if you're ready for Jesus to come back, then share the gospel. That's the easiest hack as, is. as the world keeps getting darker. Lord, when are you going to come back? And he's like, I'll come back when all the gospel has been shared to all every nation of the world. Well, Lord, I, I, I can't make it over to China. Yeah, but you can make it to the end of your block. You can make it to the end of your road. Or you can, you can, you can go to the, to the corner part of the factory the part where you probably don't hang out over and talk to them or you can go to the side of walmart that you don't usually shop on because you have no reason to be over there and you can find somebody and be like okay lord give me the words to say there's all kind of opportunities amen, amen. but do not surrender your heart to fear john 14 1 you don't have to turn there but literally jesus says it was big mama's favorite verse do not surrender your heart to fear do not surrender your heart to fear lest your heart be troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not surrender your heart to fear. Instead of leaning into fear, can I tell you what we should be doing? Instead of leaning into fear, here's what we should be doing. There's this song, it's called Trust by Elevation Rhythm. And literally the word says, maybe it's okay that I don't know the future. To know you is all I need. Maybe it's all right to close my eyes and follow and trust that you'll take care of me. And here's the chorus, you ready? So I'll trust you in the middle of the journey, not in a rush, you can take your time with me. I'll trust when the road seems blurry, I know you know what you're doing. And there are a lot of times where I have to say that over myself. And I encourage you, make that your prayer. Yeah, I recommended a book earlier. I'm recommending this song, Trust by Elevation Rhythm. Make that your prayer. Lord I, I, Lord, I don't know the future. But Lord, I know according to your word and according to all that you've brought me from, I know that you are all I need, Lord. I struggle closing my eyes and I struggle following you, Lord. Peter said that, that even though I, ha I, I, I believe you, but help the part that doesn't believe in you. Lord, right now I'm trusting you in the middle of this journey. Lord, I want to be in a rush, but I'm trusting for you to not to, to put me into a, 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 a more calmer, steady pace. I'm trusting that you're going to take your time with me, Lord. I'm trusting you even when the road seems blurry. I know, God, I know you know what you're doing. There's several times where I'm praying and I'm like, Lord, when's this going to happen? When's this? Lord, I'm not seeing this. Lord, I'm not seeing this. And the Holy Spirit remind me. He just, and the Holy Spirit is different with each individual because we all receive differently. But when I get that kind of posture in my heart, the Lord remind me of when I was a kid sitting in Tiny Todd's daycare watching The Wizard of Oz. Don't laugh. 
And the first time I seen it, and I seen it all the way through the end, I get to the scene where the, they realize that there was somebody behind the curtain. And I remember seeing my, just, I, see, I see little Lindsay and his eyes pop off like, oh, there was somebody behind the curtain. And when my posture gets like that, the Holy Spirit reminds me of that scene. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I know you're, I know you're working behind the curtain. Lord, you're working behind the scenes. Lord, you're doing stuff. You're, I know you're still in control. It don't feel like it, God. It's not fair. But I know you're still in control. Because I know you're still in control, I will trust you. And Lord, because I trust you, I will continue to do the last thing that you told me to do. That's one of the things that made David so great. He was anointed king. And this is why we couldn't have been anointed king or queen. If we were anointed king or queen, we'd be like, all right, where's my Tesla? Let's go. Call up the boss. I quit. Not even give a two weeks notice. I quit. You know who you're talking? First off, we call him up. They'll be like, hello. Hey, do you know who's talking? This is the king. This is King Lindsay. That's right. Uh-huh. God done made me king. Hey, I quit. Goodbye. We would instantly be in our motions. But when David was anointed king, he went back to the sheep field. He went back to the fields. Why? Because that was the last thing his father had asked him to do. What's the last thing the Lord has directed you to do? Yes, everything is going on. You can open up your phone and pull up and it's going to show you everything that's going on. Or guess what? People will call you or text you and let you give you updates. But at the end of the day, do not surrender. Thank you for listening to, to the True fear, North man. Church podcast. If you're not already following us on social, check out our website at truenorth731.com to find direct links to our pages. Also, if you would like to contribute to the work we are trying to do, you can click the safe and secure giving link and follow the prompts. Thank you for helping us build and strengthen our community. Until next time, have a great day.